some of our recently posted content in the last week um, available on YouTube. Most of these are public, of course. Uh, can a short strangle repair a stock that is down? And we looked at other ways that you might consider a stock repair for a position that's down in price. We're going to look a little bit at that possibly today also. Evaluating an out-of-the-money bear put debit spread inside of the Marion put position. Uh, there's a presentation recently posted content closing a single leg in the portfolio and more topics related to power options. Full put credit spreads, closing the position, outcomes, and setting alerts in the portfolio as triggers so you don't let it get too far away from you. Selling a call against a profitable long call, creating a diagonal spread after you have a call that's moved up in price. And research and analysis using the power options tools to research the stock or the option and, of course, other tools as well. So that's just some of the recent content we had uh, posted there for you. Um, and as again, it's available on YouTube, and some of them are available on Power Options as well. Well, all that being said, let's navigate over to Power Options. We'll use the tools, of course, to illustrate uh, all the questions that come in. And the first question, of course, that came in via email, excuse me, is from Charles. And Charles had asked, related to the married put positions, <clears throat> what are your thoughts on buying additional shares using the paper profits of the put side of the married put? Okay, so what is he referring to? In the married put structure that we advocate uh, in the rules of the blueprint, we're going to buy a stock and we're going to buy an in-the-money put, maybe one or two strikes in the money, 150 days out in time. My average is usually around 220, 230 days out of time, almost eight months, it seems. Now, we have a low-risk position, but as the stock moves up, stagnates or moves down, the blueprint teaches 12 different ways to generate income against that position, lower the initial at-risk to potentially bulletproof the trade where we have no risk on the position, which is a nice place to be going into earnings. We'll take a look at that in a moment as well. So what Charles is referring to is if I got into a position recently, these aren't the right prices here, but so let me change the prices on this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was ESI. This was a position we opened in the Fusion portfolio uh, about seven, eight days ago. When I edit the position here, because I think my original cost was back on the 14th or 15th. I can't remember. We'll just go with the 14th. In any case, I think this was about 23 50 or 23.45 and for the 25 put we paid about 325 i think somewhere along those lines so yes i have a total cost into the position right now of 26.75 guaranteed to get 25 back so we're only risking 175 in the absolute worst case scenario okay now <clears throat> This isn't a great example. We have some other ones here, none of them that really have a profit. But in this case, the stock's down about 64 cents, and I've made half of that back with the put option. Okay, not a lot. I've made $30. So I believe what Charles is asking is if I had two or three dollars of profit on this position, two hundred or three hundred dollars, is it worth it now to go in and buy another share, two shares, five shares of the stock? And my answer to that question, Charles, is only if you feel the stock is going to go back up in price. Okay? If I was in a position where my put has gained two, three, or four dollars, or I paid five dollars for it, it's now at seven, that means that the stock has probably dropped about four points, four and a half points from when I got in. It's going in the wrong direction. Okay, so it might have been just basic news. It might be like the position I'm in. Um, <clears throat> with Ally Financial that was a bulletproof trade going into earnings this week, and the stock's given up almost 10% in two days. Part of that is because the investors are worried that uh, the earnings were good. Investors were worried that they've also bought into a uh, digital credit card company. I, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. And Ally had a bad uh, <laughs> experience some years ago trying to get into credit cards as well. So I fear some investors might think that the same thing's going to happen with this venture into credit cards for them. But I'm still bullish on the stock. I think it's going to recover. I will say that the drop took me off guard, but I was bulletproof. I had absolutely no risk on the position. Now the put has increased significantly, but again, I'm guaranteed to make about uh, 0.4, 0.5%, and I can still do income methods. 
but let's talk about this one. The stock's moving down. I have a paper profit of, let's say, 2 to $3 on the put option, which is increasing in price as the stock's declining. So what would it be if, let's just say, I bought another 10 shares of this stock. If I had a $240, $250 profit, bought another 10 shares of this stock here, in this case, and now I sort of have a ratio, don't I? I have 110 shares of stock and one put option, not 1.1 because I can't do that, but just one put option. Remember, the initial risk was 6.5%. Now the risk goes up to 14% because nothing is covering these extra shares. Now that 14% maximum loss occurs if the stock goes all the way down to zero. Don't expect that to happen either. But we do see this accelerated curve to the downside if my stock continues to move down. So just like when I would use a stock repair, Charles, <clears throat> if I was had a stock that's down, and as I mentioned, we might take a look at that today. And I looked at the stock repair. Well, the stock repair helps me get back to break even faster. This lowered the break even, depending on the cost that I would have paid. And that, that's a trick too, because I would have paid $23.50 for 110 shares. This probably would have dropped down to about $23.10 or something along those lines. So I'd have a lower cost basis, forgot to mention that. So now my break even is going to adjust slightly to the upside. Now the break even here is at expiration, but you can see the curve red line, the profit at the halfway point moves down to about 24 or so. And that's on February 7th, 2022. Okay. So paper profits on the put means you haven't closed the put, Charles. Um, you haven't done <clears throat> taken any of the profit in. You have an unrealized profit in the put. You're using that to put more money into a position that's moving against you. My thoughts on this are, unless you're extremely bullish and you think the stock is bottomed, it's going to rebound. I don't know if I'd add the extra risk on the position in case it continues to move down against me. I know it's not a lot, you know, $200 or so, an extra 10 shares in the position. Another consideration is how much of that profit do you have, Charles, in the put? In other words, if I was in this $20 stock, well, not this one, but <laughs> if I was in this $20 stock and it dropped four points to where I had $2 or $200 of profit on my put option, well, that's about a 20% decline, okay, 18, 17% decline. I might be considering getting out of the position if it was that extreme. Or if the stock dropped four points down to 19 and I was bullish on the stock, bought another 10 shares or 20 shares, we see that we increase the risk to the downside to maybe up to 12.8%. But again, only if it goes all the way down to zero in this case. We do help the break even out a little bit if we're expecting the stock to rebound. But another thing I might consider is one of those adjustments in the blueprint, I may consider moving down the put, which is a lot like averaging down. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna sell the put for the higher price. Let's say I could get $5 for this, and I'm going to pay, you know, three fifty for this put if the stock's trading down at twenty dollars or so. What does that do? That's going to lower my cost basis. It's still going to have a put in place. I am giving up two fifty of my guaranteed exit with this particular income method that's talked about in the blueprint. But I would have lowered my break even, possibly down well at expiration to twenty three. But in the next month or two, it might have dropped down to twenty one or lower. Okay. That's one of the bearish income methods that we use in the blueprint. There's a right time to do it. And again, you only do it if you think the stock is going to recover. Just like any repair or adding more money, Charles, into the position to buy more shares of stock. And again, you're talking about on a paper profit, not a profit that's been realized and taken in. If I adjust the put option first, maybe I even move it in closer. I could probably take that 6% risk down to 3% and lower my break even as well. Okay. So that's what I'm uh, considering in this aspect. Um, in the income method number four chapter of the blueprint, if there's a profit on the side and you're considering rolling the put, there's an adjustment that's talked about the alternative to income method number four, where I wouldn't add more shares, but I might close the whole position and go into a call now that it's bulletproof in that case. Okay. So those are my thoughts, Charles, on adding more shares. You only do it if you think the stock is going to move up, just like I only do income method number nine if I feel very confident that the stock is bottomed and it's going to recover in that case. Um, the ally position that I had mentioned, um, let's go back to the portfolio. 
I think this is correct. Yeah, it's about right. Okay, it's not that much. Uh, so let me increase the price here to 43. Somewhere around those lines. Okay, so that's probably more accurate. But this is the situation I was in going into earnings after I bought back the call last week uh, for a small price. Sold a call, 55 call for 91 cents, bought it back for 8 cents uh, before it started to run up prior to earnings. And then, of course, it just fell. <laughs> Two days in a row, it's down to 50. Yes, yeah, so it was it was as high as 56.20. It's now down to about 50.70 or so. I think we saw, yeah, 50.70. So I'm not worried about it because I have a locked-in profit, but I don't know if I'm going to roll down the put because that'll take me on a bulletproof status in that position. And in that case, um, I'd rather keep the bulletproof status. I'm at least holding it for seven to eight days, even though it's down because it's paying a dividend. Uh, the ex-dividend date, excuse me, is on the 28th. So I'll be on record for that one in that case uh, to be able to do it. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna take, uh, Ben, your question was next, but I'm gonna take David and Jason and then Kenneth because they all relate to the topic that we're on very quickly. Let's go back to our uh, ESI spread here. Okay, this is the initial one. And let's go back just to 100 shares, the current price. There you go. All right, 5.1% at risk. Um, David's question that just came in, David H says, why not a bull put spread under the current price if you're bullish? Okay. We don't use the bull put spread in the married put structure. It's not one of the 12 income methods. And the reason why is because it increases the risk on the position, even if I'm bullish. Because I the put that I have here, David, doesn't cover the additional obligation. The bull put still adds three, four, or five points to the risks to the downside. I want to keep the risk the same or lower it with the income methods. I don't want to risk increasing it if the stock goes against me. As you know, bull puts are used in a different portion of my portfolio with a different type of stock selection than the longer term married put growth. But a bull put credit spread and a bull call debit spread, you can do that if you want to. But we don't discuss that as one of the 12 income methods in the blueprint and the structure of the married put because it adds to the risk if you're wrong. Quick example, of course, probably go out of the money here. Have to go to November. No premium whatsoever there. So we're going to have to go with the 22 and a half and 20. Two and a half point spread. We're probably going to add about uh, 60 cents of net credit to the position to lower the risk. But we're going to have to put up the 250 margin in order to put on that bull put credit spread. So the risk to the downside goes up 12.5%. And that's hit pretty quickly if we're down to 20, if I'm wrong on the position. So this is why that's not one of the income methods. Now, one of the riskless spread trades, quote unquote, where I don't have, I can use a spread trade, but I don't have to put up any margin to cover it in the blueprint is income method number six. And that's never done right away, but if I'm bullish on the stock and I got better premiums once the stock moved up, say David to 24, uh, 24 50 maybe, I might sell the 25 call for 50 or 60 cents and buy the 30. So it's a bear call spread. But in this case, my broker just sees it as, well, let's get some good premiums in there if the stock was trading up at 24. Let's just put 50 cents in there. But see, in this five-point spread, I don't have to put up the margin because my broker just sees it as a covered call with an extra long call protected by a put. So that extra margin doesn't come into play. This is why we wait for the position to move up before using that income method because I don't want to get in a trap where I can lose twice. Okay, We get that little heartbeat there, but it goes down negative again. If I'm still bullish on the stock, although this brings in some income, I don't want to necessarily do that. But the great thing about it is it leaves the upside open if the stock continues to move. Okay, So that's, that's just uh, why we don't do the bull put credit spread inside the married put structure, because we don't want to add to the risk if we're wrong or the market takes a turn on us in general. And this goes into Jason's question. And Jason says, do you ever recommend starting an RPM by first selling a naked put with the goal of being assigned to get a cost reduction basis before creating the married put? Personally, I do not. For income, which is a naked put used, you know, to, to get in the stock at a lower price, Jason, I will use a bull put credit spread, but that's a different structure. I'm going shorter term, 
looking to maximize premium and have a high uh, return rate, high win rate, I should say, 85, 87% or so on those positions. The risk of doing the naked put first, okay, so if I had gone into this one, November, 22 and a half and sold the put, uh, it was probably about 35 cents at that time. All right, so we're about 10%. I'm sorry, not that much. We're, we're stocks at 23 now. It was at 2350 when I got into it. Excuse me, Jason. And so I sell the 22 and a half and I get 35 cents. It's a 1.6% return on the $2,250 I have to put up for the margin requirement. That's fine. The issue here is that, okay, if the stock goes down, goes down to let's say 2240 I get put the stock I keep the 35 cents we have a cost basis of 2215 and now I can convert it to a married put by buying the 25 put or 22 and a half whatever looks best for my risk tolerance but the two factors here are obvious number one if the market takes a sudden turn there we go and suddenly drops 10 percent down to 20 I'm looking at a much higher loss on this naked put than I would be had I been in the married put. And if my sentiment has changed from whatever news came out that caused that decline, whether it was earnings related or a pre-early uh, pre -early earnings morning announcement, if it was some other news that came out about a patent lawsuit or a CEO doing something he shouldn't, she shouldn't be doing, who knows, my sentiment might change and I want to get out of the position. But at this point, the stock's at 20, it's going to cost me 290 or so to buy to close this put if I no longer want to be in the stock and I don't want to be put because I think more bad news is coming. In that case, I'm taking a significant loss. I'm still down 10%. I probably would have only been down 3% with the married put in place in the first place. Now, in addition to that is the other direction. What if I pick the right stock and in the next 30 days it goes up to 25? Okay, well, I've made my 35 cents, go out to the next month, sell a 25 strike put, get another 1.6% and the stock goes up to 28 or 29. That expires, I made another 1.6%. If I picked the right stock, Jason, and it did move up as I was expecting, I would have been in a much higher profit in the married put position. I would have made at least 50%, probably 60 or 70% of that move from 22 to 28. Yes, I know that's a little bit extreme, but we've seen that happen before. I'd be better off in the married put position than just getting 1.6 here and then maybe another 1.5, 1.6 for the next month. Can you do it? Yes. Are investors profitable trading naked puts to get into stock at a discount? Yes, but you take the good with the bad. Two out of 10, one out of 10 is gonna have that surprise where it goes down here. Another three out of 10 might have a surprise where it exceeds your expectation, and I would have been better off in that limited risk, unlimited upside profit potential with an unexpected jump rather than a capped gain like a naked put or a covered call position. You can do it. We just don't with this structure. Now, another question comes in, well, if you're worried about the risk, why don't you buy the same put you were going to buy for the married put and sell the naked put? Well, now this becomes a little bit more risky, not in the sense that you're adding risk, but we're creating a leveraged position. We're going to use the March 25 put that we would have used before with the 22 and a half put. What is the advantage of this? It's going to lower the margin requirement because I'm not in a naked put position. What's the disadvantage of this? I entered this as a married put because I went through the married put search on power options. The default criteria that we prefer to use were 90% of the trades that Ernie and I put into the married put uh, fusion portfolio that come from that exact search. And I looked at the chart and everything and did my research. And I said, this is a stock and a position that I'm comfortable with the risk. And I do have a feeling that it has the potential to move up three to 5% in the next 30 to 40 days and more beyond that as the market, if the market continues to move up in price. But doing this, what have I done? I gave myself an opportunity to get into the stock at a discount by buying it at 22.50 instead of at 23, collected a premium of 50 cents, 
I reduced the cost of my put, I'm sorry, 35 cents, my apologies, reduced the cost of the put in this case. But I picked this stock because I expect it to move up three to 5% within the next 20 to 40 days. I created a bearish position. Whereas the stock's moving up now, I can't make any more than that 35 cents that I sold the put for and my long put is losing in value. Now I have to scramble to try to buy the stock at a higher price, which is going to give me a higher risk, even though I collected 35 cents initially on the position, simply because I'm losing money. I created a bearish position on a stock that I was bullish on just to try to get in at a cheaper price. This is not the way to go. This is not a substitute. Again, we talked about just the naked put. If you're confident in the stock, you want to put up the cash secured amount anyway, the cash secured put to get into the position. And you think the stock is stable enough where it's not going to drop down to 20 or down to 17 or something along those lines. And you don't think it's going to be a rocket ship and exceed your expectations and go up to 27 or 28 or 29. You could use this approach, but remember, if it goes beyond your expectations one direction or the other, you're either taking more losses, much more than you would have in just the married put, or you're missing out on the upside gains you could have had if it exceeds your expectations to the upside. Okay, and that's what I feel. This is we have other webinars on this. Um, I'll point you to those, Jason, on um. The discussion on alternative ways to enter a married put and why we don't necessarily do them. What are the pros and cons of other ways, quote unquote, cheaper ways to get into a married put position? If I like the stock and I do the analysis that I want because I plan on being in the position for three to four months and I have the expectation of the return, I'm not going to try to get a better price. I'm not going to try to force income right away. I'm going to get into the position that I want that matches that criteria right then and there and has the risk that I want already controlled in that case. And I'm not going to try to get in at a cheaper price by doing a put, especially if I'm more bullish on the position. Again, I want to have the profit and loss chart in my favor of the limited controlled risk with the unlimited upside. I like a long call. Yes, it looks like a long call, but remember, I'm only risking four, five, or 6% rather than 100% of what I invested into the long call option if the stock does not do as I expect or some unfortunate news comes out that does drop 10, 12% in that case.